We are speaking to you on the eve of COP26. What impact would you like your new role as Special Presidential Envoy for Climate to have during these negotiations? Well, we want to have a successful outcome where we are raising ambition on a global basis and keeping alive over the next 10 years the ability to limit the Earth's temperature increase to 1.5 degrees. It's a very heavy lift, but countries are stepping up in ways that they never have before. And so I think there's a global recognition of urgency. Let's talk about one of those countries if we can. Can we make real progress at COP26 if China doesn't show up at the table or follow through with substantial commitment? I mean, the answer is, can we make real progress? Yes, but will it be, will it enable us to go as far as we need to? The answer is no. Governments need corporations also to buy into lower carbon emissions. What do you need from the Amazons and the Exxon Mobiles and other international companies to achieve change at scale? Obviously, internally in their companies, they're going to have to move to sustainable practices. They have to green their own companies. But in addition to that, uh, they've got to help lay out game-changing finance structures and mechanisms so that we can affect this transition. This is doable. Obviously, we need big countries, as you mentioned, like China and Russia and others, to be pushing their ambition to a higher level. China will be making announcements in the next weeks. We hope those announcements will raise their level of effort so that um, there's less that we have to achieve over the course of the next 10 years. So how do we hold countries, including ourselves, the United States, right, uh, accountable coming out of COP and the negotiations when the richest nations in the world really haven't delivered on their commitments from Paris when it comes to cutting emissions? Transparency is critical. There are new technologies being put in place from satellite technology and other transparent activities taking place globally. For instance, big companies are going to be required as a matter of financial responsibility to make judgments about what's coming at them in terms of climate before they invest. Investors are going to demand this. I mean, you don't invest in a place that's going to be underwater in, in, in 10 years. I think the marketplace will do a lot to create accountability. We won't have an international law that holds everybody to the same standard, but you know, naming and shaming will be a large part of people not wanting to be on the wrong end of this uh, stick. For instance, products that come from a country that is not doing what it should be to reduce its emissions may well find themselves being taxed or tariffs being put on them because they're not doing their part. What are the three things you hope to accomplish at COP26? I think the most important thing is we get huge increase of ambition to lower the emissions, which the scientists are telling us is absolutely critical. Second, that we get roadmaps laid out by people for how they're going to get in the next 20, 30 years to the net zero to decarbonize our economy. And number three, we've got to have agreement on finance, on how we are going to excite the movement of investment, of capital, into these new technologies, which is going to help us to solve the problem. And, and there's a technical thing we have to do, which is there's a rule book. We have to finalize that so everybody knows what the rules of the road are and where they're going. If we do those things and raise the ambition over the next 10 years, um, I think it'll be quite exciting. And, and I look forward to uh, watching the marketplace grow and the transition take hold. Thank you very much. Thank you.